It's five or so minutes with Ingo. We promise to keep this real brief. He's a PhD and a hip data scientist and a rapid minor commander in chief. Hey, Ingo. Hey, Graham. Happy New Year. Thanks. Same to you. All right. Well, look, so it's the new year. It's 2015. Very right. exciting. And this is, uh, this is five minutes with Ingo. So we're going to spend five minutes hearing from you, hopefully not uh, any more than a few seconds hearing from me. And what we want to talk about today is when you think about the new year and you think about 2015 and the analytics, right? What are the big challenges you see on the horizon for analytics? Okay. Makes sense. Um... Before I start on the challenges, actually, I would I would really like to start and spend one second on the great stuff. The great stuff is really, you don't you don't you don't have the need to explain analytics to people any longer. Everybody gets it. Everybody gets the need for analytics. It's really one of the biggest changes we have seen in the in the in the past couple of years that people are moving their own business process and everything in a way that actually analytics is supporting them. So that's great. Everybody understands the value of analytics, and we don't need to educate people on that. But unfortunately. It's also coming, well, with a small problem, and it's coming at a price. And the problem here really is that actually, well, the demand is very high, but there are not many people who can deliver this. Mm. Well, I can, I can give you actually a, like, like a visual example for that. That'd be um, great. Let me do my best. Let's maybe take this pen, hoping that you can see this. So, Graham, do me a favor. So, what is that? Uh, triangle. Yeah, right. But actually, for a guy from marketing, that's a shocking lack of uh, imagination, really. So let me help you a little bit. Um, hmm. So probably you're getting an idea any second now. Safety cone? Uh, dunce no, cap? No, no, no. A mountain. Like that. Okay, now you get it in a second. Uh, Look at that. Oh, it's a unicorn. You got it. <laughs> so and this unicorn really is the big problem. What, what do I mean by that? Um, the unicorn is really, for me, is a metaphor for, for, for data scientists right now. And the reason for that is a data scientist is a superstar programmer. They need a PhD in statistics, and of course, they understand every business problem in the world. Mm -hmm. Right. So, difficult to find. I heard they're existing, but they're really difficult to find. Um, and that's also true for unicorns. So, and that is really the key problem for, for, for analytics today. Um, everything is moving away from those backwards looking questions like what happened in the last year who cares it happened already so people would like to answer questions about the future they want to use predictive analytics to predict what's going to happen next but they think they need this those really rare resources the data scientists those unicorns for doing so and i say well that is a huge problem and it's becoming a larger problem um, at the same time the value of analytics well increases but it doesn't need to be and, and that's that's sort of a prediction for this year as well. I think this problem is there, but it can also be solved. So we have the challenge of talent, right? Of finding unicorns or empowering other people to become unicorns, right? Exactly. So how do we then balance the talent, the tools, and the technology? And even more so, how do you explain that in under two minutes? Well, we have two minutes left in five minutes with Ingo. Okay, so <laughs> let, me, let, me, uh, let me try that. So... So the first thing is, it's exactly all three elements. It's, it's really, it always starts with technology, so you need to store the data, and big data was really going a long way there. So we now store basically everything on a very detailed level, and that's great, because if you're doing predictions about the future, you need this, this detailed level, otherwise all those predictions you're doing are, well, more or less on a very high level. They might support your decisions, but that's not good enough. The biggest value of predictions is if you're doing like millions of small predictions and automate them and integrate them into your business processes. So big data was important. So that's about technology. Fine, great. We have all the machine learning algorithms. Rapid Miner has like 250 of them. So there's a lot of stuff going on there as well. Good. So technology-wise, that's good. The next level is really the tools. And why are tools so important? Because tools are really changing people and how they are working with those kinds of well, those different kinds of technologies. So um, that's where RapidMiner also comes, comes into play. It really is a, is, is a software, but it's not so much about just throwing whatever those hundreds of machine learning algorithms on those big data infrastructures. No, that is important, but it's not, it's not all. What RapidMiner really is about is actually about making this transformation, transforming normal people, people like you and me, Graham, just transform them into those unicorns, into those data scientists, because that's the biggest problem we have. We only have those few data scientists here. But this is the need for analytics. So how can we solve this without transformation? Well, I don't think we can solve it without. That's why we do what we do.
Awesome. And this has been your five minutes with Ingo. Thanks. He said, son, have you ever seen a unicorn? I'm proof they really exist. I've created a platform called Rocket Miner. We make anyone a data scientist.